Denying the antecedent is the name of another invalid conditional argument form. You should think of this as the invalid version of modus tollens. On the left is modus tollens, which is valid. On the right is the invalid form that is commonly called denying the antecedent. It's no mystery why it's called this. You're denying the antecedent and trying to infer the denial of the consequent. Let's look at some examples. If the pavement is wet in the morning, then it rained last night. The pavement is not wet this morning, therefore it didn't rain last night. It's not hard to see why this is invalid. It could have rained last night, but it stopped early and the rain on the pavement evaporated before morning. So clearly these premises don't guarantee the truth of the conclusion. Here's another one, inspired by an example from the last tutorial. If there's no gas in the car, then the car won't run. There is gas in the car, therefore the car will run. Note that we've eliminated the negations in the second premise and the conclusion by using double negation on the antecedent and the consequent. This still has the form of denying the antecedent, if A then B, not A, therefore not B. But the antecedent, A, is already a negation, so by denying the antecedent you're saying it's not the case that there's no gas in the car, which just means that there is gas in the car. This one is obviously invalid too. The fact that there's gas in the car in no way guarantees that the car is going to run. Now let's do a trickier one. Question, is this argument guilty of denying the antecedent? I know you didn't say your wish out loud, because if you had, it wouldn't have come true, and your wish did come true. Hmm. The only way to be really sure about an argument like this is to rewrite it in standard form, either in your head or on paper. First of all, what's the conclusion? This is the conclusion. You didn't say your wish out loud. The word because is an indicator word that flags this. The I know isn't part of the content of the conclusion. It just helps to indicate that this is an inference that follows from something else. Okay, so what is the conditional premise? Well, this is the conditional premise. In the original it reads, if you had, it wouldn't have come true. To make the antecedent explicit, you need to clarify what it refers to. It refers to your wish. I've rewritten the conditional in the present tense because it will sound more natural when it's written in standard form. But you're not altering the content of the claim in any significant way by doing this. Now, what we have left is the phrase, and your wish did come true. The and isn't part of the claim. The claim is, your wish did come true. This is the second premise. Now we have all we need to write this in standard form. If you say your wish out loud, then it won't come true. Your wish did come true, therefore you didn't say your wish out loud. Now, does this argument have the invalid form of denying the antecedent? No, it does not. This argument has the form of modus tollens, which is valid. Some people can see the logical relationships right away just by glancing at the original argument, but those people are in the minority. Most of us need to check to make sure we've got it right. And the only way to do that is to reconstruct the argument and put it in standard form so we can compare the form with the valid and invalid forms that we do know.